we're going to take a look at the big fat myth about cholesterol. And this is part one. This will be a deflame diet view of the problems with how cholesterol is presented to both physicians and to patients. First and foremost, whenever we think about cholesterol, uh, we focus on the total cholesterol amount and how and how bad supposedly bad how high supposedly bad LDL cholesterol is, and how high uh, supposedly HDL cholesterol is. And uh, we've all been told for decades now that the reason why problems develop is because of basically too much butter and meat. Well, this is ridiculous. If one only ate uh, cookies that had been prepared without fat and just with sugar and flour, the cholesterol problem that I'm going to describe right now would develop. But the average person eats combinations of foods. We eat sugar, flour, and fats along with it. And, and the most common fat source will be our refined oils that we get in our fast foods and all of our packaged goods. So we eat this. We put these foods in our mouth. It goes to our gut, uh, becomes sugar, flour, and trans fats. And then into the small intestine, the sugar and flour become glucose, and the trans fat, of course, is trans fat, and both get absorbed. Once in circulation, we have a high blood sugar event called hyperglycemia and trans fats. And it turns out because since people eat so many calories of sugar and flour, the average American lives in a high blood sugar state most of the day. Uh, at some point, they'll achieve that level as they go through life, and they and then that will be associated with the development of metabolic syndrome, which is the real driver of the, cholest of the cholesterol problem. And I'm talking about the legit cholesterol problem, not the blaming LDL as being bad. So I'll show you what I mean here. So on the bottom left, you can see healthy LDL. Yes, that is correct. LDL cholesterol is healthy. We, we, we make more of it than HDL for a reason. We need LDL cholesterol to do its cholesterol delivery job around the body. And of course, we need healthy HDL cholesterol. Both are healthy. We need both. So why have we been told that LDL is bad? Well, once we sugar and flour up and develop metabolic syndrome, LDL cholesterol levels rise, HDL cholesterol levels are, become depressed, and we misinterpret this as LDL becoming bad. So let's see what actually happens. Hyperglycemia, HG, and trans fats. When they are exposed to healthy LDL. Healthy LDL gets transformed into a small, dense SD, small, dense LDL molecule. Now, this hyperglycemia and trans fat, of course, again, we're thinking about this in the context, not of just doing one drive-by self-shooting at your favorite fast food establishment or, or, or coffee shop. We're talking about living in this state. So eventually, your healthy LDL will become transformed into small, dense LDL cholesterol. The same hyperglycemia and trans fats will now potentiate, will produce, will promote the oxidation, OX, of small, dense LDL. Now your oxidized small, dense LDL is actually a free radicalized, a free radicalized small, dense LDL particle. And so this particular LDL is inflamed and it is the problem. Small dense LDL, oxidized small dense LDL, those are both pro-inflammatory and problematic and are completely different metabolically from healthy LDL. And HDL is always given the pass as being healthy, but it too, when exposed to sugar, flour, high, gly high glucose levels, and trans fats, becomes inflamed. And so now we transform both healthy LDL and healthy HDL cholesterol into inflamed LDL and inflamed HDL cholesterol. And it's these two that promote multiple and various diseases. PAD stands for peripheral artery disease. And this is just five of many conditions that are associated with uh, the, the transformation of healthy LDL and HDL into uh, their inflamed counterparts. Even joint diseases and tendon pathology are promoted by this, this pro-inflammatory state that is involved in the transformation of 
healthy LDL and HDL cholesterol. Now, this is the first time that you've heard this. You might be thinking, well, this is the first time I've heard it. And is it really true? Well, let's look. This is back in 2002. And here we can see we're going to zoom in. So we're looking at LDL, as you can see here, in blue, healthy, non-oxidized LDL. And here you can see in the top, you see your, I'm going to just get, grab a pointer going here. Here you have a monocyte. It enters into the vessel wall, becomes a macrophage. And look what happens. Look at the difference between your healthy LDL versus your oxidized LDL. They're totally different molecules. And it is the pro-inflammatory inflamed LDL that is immunogenic. It stimulates an inflammatory reaction uh, by, by the immune system. And so another paper, this is 2001, so we're talking now. This is, this is November 2016. So this is, these are review articles published 16 years ago. So this has been known for two or three decades, uh, the problems, perhaps even longer, uh, about the transformation of LDL into oxidized LDL. And by the way, people will you know, wonder, uh, how do I know if my how do I know if my LDL is oxidized? How how do I know if my LDL is oxidized? Well, there uh, oxidized LDL is not a routine test. It can be done. It's just not routine. So the way you'd know is you take your total uh, triglyceride level. Well, it just comes as triglycerides. So your triglyceride level and divide it by your HDL level. So if you have 160 for triglycerides and 40 for HDL, that is a number of four. The ratio is four. So if you're above 3.5, uh, you are much more likely to have oxidized LDL than if you're below 3.5. So 3.5 is kind of the cutoff, whereby uh, we see an increased production of oxidized LDL. So you just have to have to look triglycerides divided by HDL get the number, and if it's above 3.5, you got oxidized LDL being produced. So this is very much a different view than what uh, the average physician is taught in school and what patients are then taught by their physicians regarding LDL and HDL cholesterol. And in the big fat myth part two about cholesterol, we'll, we'll talk about how we actually make cholesterol from sugar. And so uh, stay tuned for part two.